You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to spice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it was a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Romare Bearden. Now, let's start with a little bit of background. Fred Romare Harry Bearden was born September 2nd, 1911. He was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, but very quickly his family moved to New York. I think he was just like three years old at the time. They settled in Harlem, where Bearden attended PS5, and in 1922, his mother Bessie Bearden was elected to serve on the New York School Board No. 15. Although he mostly attended New York public schools, he actually graduated from high school in Pittsburgh. He and his grandparents moved to Pittsburgh from 1927 to 1929. I notice it seems like he moved around a bit early in life. After high school, he spent two years at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania before he transferred to Boston University. He took a lot of art classes there, and he was a standout talent. That's where he met Elmer Sims Campbell, the first black cartoonist to be published in major publications like the Saturday Evening Post, which made Norman Rockwell a household name. Bearden then shifted toward illustration. He also shifted to New York University. He made cartoons for the medley. That was NYU's publication. In 1933, Bearden made political cartoons for The Crisis. That was a publication focused on the civil rights and the fight for equality. It was sponsored by the NAACP. In 1935, he graduates NYU with a bachelor's in science in education, but he continues making cartoons. He spent two years publishing weekly cartoons for the Baltimore Afro-American newspaper. Of course, he was more than just an illustrator. Nothing against illustration, but Bearden had interests in a lot of different art forms. In 1940, he had his first solo exhibition of paintings and drawings. Of course, 1940s, there was quite a bit else going on in the world. Talking, of course, about World War II. So 1942, like so many other men his age, he enlisted as a private in the army. After the war, in 1950, he traveled to Europe for more pleasant purposes. He studied under the GI Bill. Specifically, he was studying philosophy at Sorbonne. And just as a little aside, if you're not familiar with the Art Explorer Academy, it's a free online learning platform. It was made in partnership with major institutions, Beaux-Arts, the British Museum, the Louvre. They offer a certificate program backed by Sorbonne University, and I'm proud to say Who Arted is in the Art Explorer Academy's media library. I'll link it in the show notes for anyone who's interested in going a little deeper in their exploration of the arts. But back to Bearden. He came from a family that was passionate about education. Like I said, his mother served on the school board. He attended several universities, studying lots of different topics, and he was also interested in more than just the visual arts. He loved literature, poetry, jazz music. 1951, he co-founded Bluebird Music Company. When he returned to New York, he took a job at the Department of Social Services. Of course, he continued to make visual arts, painting, making collages, all of that sort of stuff. But what I find most interesting about Bearden is this synthesis of all these different ideas and interests and passions coming together. 1963, as the civil rights movement is happening, he formed an artist collective, The Spiral, to focus on the role of artists in the struggle to advance civil rights. While Bearden has created a lot of beautiful and interesting work, I think one of my favorite pieces is The Return of Odysseus from 1977. I should say The Return of Odysseus is parenthetically titled 
homage to Pinturicchio and Benin. This is a collage piece of Bearden's, and I think part of the reason that this specific work appeals so much to me is it's a synthesis of those things that I was talking about. His passion for education, his passion for civil rights and equality, as well as his love of the visual arts. As the parenthetical title would indicate, it's an homage to Pinturicchio's version, a painting that was made between 1508-1509. Now, Pinturicchio's was a fresco. It was painted directly on the wall. Frescoes are painted into wet plaster to make it um, to make it very permanent because the paint is a part of the construction of the wall rather than just applied as a top coat on the wall. That fresco was later transferred to a canvas, and in here. Bearden is taking that composition that Pinturicchio made. Of course, Pinturicchio's work was a Renaissance piece. It was referencing the ancient Greek, the story of Odysseus, the Odyssey. It's from the 28th century BCE. So it is one of our oldest surviving literary works. Now, if you're not familiar with Homer's Odyssey, um, the the short version, and I mean very short version, of what's happening in this particular scene is it's the return of Odysseus. Odysseus, the hero of the story, had been gone to fight the Trojan War. He's been gone for 20 years, presumed dead. He gets home to see his wife, who's being courted by a bunch of other dudes. Rather than just like saying hi and return to life as normal, he disguises himself to compete for her affections. Um, I guess, you know, he didn't want to win it by default. So he's put to the test. Naturally, he passes, stringing a bow, because I guess that's what it took to prove your identity and be a great person back then. Romir Bearden said that ancient Greece, the the stories, the philosophy, they had such an important role in the shaping of Western civilization. He felt it was really important that anybody be able to connect to those stories. And so he wanted to make sure that anybody can see themselves in those stories. As Bearden reimagined the Odyssey, he made all the characters black. When he talked about this series of works that he made depicting the Odyssey, he said, quote, It's universal. So if a child in Benin or in Louisiana sees my paintings of Odysseus, he can understand the myth better. Romare Bearden sought to rethink the classics in a more inclusive way because he understood that representation matters. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.